Hey guys, it's Emma again. Welcome back to Push the Prod. Today we're going to be talking about the top seven best positions in the tech industry. And of course, this is my personal opinion, so you may want to take it with a grain of salt. Um, of course, there's lots of lists you can find online, but these are specifically the positions I would be looking for if I were to want to switch my career. So let's jump right into the video. I didn't see a lot of people change, but stay down, you gon' win. Seen some people switch up, stay down, you gon' win. A lot of people changed up, stay down, you gon' win. Seen some people switch up, stay down, you gon' win. A lot of people changed up, stay down, you gon' win. A lot of people switched up, stay down, you gon' win. I didn't see a lot of people change, but stay down. Okay, so jumping right in, coming in at number one is machine learning and AI. Machine learning is very big right now, artificial intelligence. These are big things right now in IT. And the reason why is because everything is moving towards automation, taking that data and using those large data sets to be able to have the machines learn from them um, and create these different models. So of course, this is gonna be a little bit more, one of the more complex fields to go into, uh, more challenging ones, because it does take a lot of experience in software developing, software engineering. So I definitely would recommend a degree in this one. And also maybe even minoring in mathematics because it takes some complex algorithms in a lot of the cases when you come to machine learning. But the job the demand is very high within machine learning uh, there's a lot of growth and you know as we looking forward into the future I can see this as one of those positions that you know the demand just gets even higher so I definitely recommend machine learning as number one on the list coming in at number two is software development of course software engineering had to be on this list and I'm putting it number two and within this I'm putting everything in there so web development app development back end front end all of that within software engineering I'm putting it all in one bubble uh, even though machine learning AI should technically be in there because you know you still have to you know programming languages Python C sharp C++ and that's for machine learning but you know with software engineering there you can use almost any language I just feel like software engineering isn't going anywhere of course they're saying that's the position that's going to start replacing all the jobs um, taking people's responsibilities but software engineering is getting to a place where you don't even need to know how to code you have things like Microsoft power apps that <laughs> allows you to create automation without even learning to code and that's the direction I feel like things are moving in where you have these more modulated steps of programming rather than having to just know a programming language and coding it so um, software engineers are replacing themselves but for the time being software engineer has a lot of growth there's a lot of positions right now a lot of demand um, the pay is still really high um, right now, I believe they're ranging from like 55K all the way up to 200K on average. So it's definitely one of those fields and you don't need to go to school to be in this position. You can go to a boot camp. you can self-teach yourself. I've seen a lot of different success stories, not only on YouTube, but even in the actual field. I know a lot of software developers that taught themselves and some that actually just went to a three week boot camp or a three month boot camp. So that's one of the other ones I recommend, software engineering. Coming in at number three is cloud engineering. Um, and being a cloud engineer, it may be kind of still in that new phase, but there's lots of potential of growth within that. Um, everything is moving to the cloud. Even a new startup company can if have a full infrastructure without having to put in that full investment that you know would have taken in the old days. So now you have AWS, you have Azure, you have Google. So learning choosing which one to learn as long as you learn one of them you can kind of get that concept it kind of like programming languages but of course it's going to be different because it's a completely different organization that runs them uh aws right now is number one azure is a close number two can i say close um it definitely is still large because again it's under microsoft and that anybody who's in that Microsoft ecosystem, most of those organizations are using Azure. So don't sleep on Azure. 
but overall cloud engineering, cloud computing, cloud networking, that is a big field right now. The pay is high also from that same 55K to maybe 150K is what I've been seeing. Um, and there's, I, I feel like it's one of those positions that's definitely going to continue to grow, especially as more features are being added to the stack it's going to be a great field to go into. So that's why cloud engineering comes in at number three. And before I even move on, I do wanna say for education wise, it is something that you could self teach yourself if you do have the time. Um, sometimes you may need some resources depending on how much you wanna teach yourself in regards to the funds to, to buy practice material within specific tenants. But you could also go to boot camps and different things. You, basically what I'm trying to say is you may not need a degree for cloud computing. I actually don't think you need one, but training is necessary. Coming in at number four is cybersecurity. So cybersecurity analysts, engineers, uh, this is a great field to be in. And I'm not just saying that because that's the field I'm in, but there's just so much to learn. It's a very interesting position. And as you can see, the threat landscape is constantly growing. Lots of new threat actors, which is not a positive thing, but there's just so much things going on in the digital realm that is causing a need or a demand for more professional professionals, more cybersecurity professionals, whether it's hardening on the system level, on the network level, uh, maybe even application security. There's just so many positions, so much growth. And the growth is slowing, but I feel like the demand is still pretty high and it's going to be high. Of course, software developers can come up with a tool that may replace the need for a lot of the things that um, cybersecurity professionals do, but they can do that with a lot of the other positions as well. But for the time being with the amount of really smart people out there there's just going to be always new things coming up and always new things to defend against so that's why cybersecurity is number four and uh when it comes to the education uh you don't technically need a degree but i definitely at the bare minimum say you should have some experience so i have a lot of experience at the system level at the network level so if you're going to become a network security engineer just be familiar with networking be familiar with systems again if you were within system security applications if you're application security so you don't it doesn't require a school um, or a degree but training and experience is would definitely help and will uh, put you in the right spot to possibly even secure a position. Coming in at number five is DevOps engineer. So everybody's talking DevOps, DevOps, which is very similar to cloud computing because some sometimes it's interchangeable. So it's possible that this should have been number three, but DevOps engineers, they kind of are that bridge between ops and development, as you can hear in the name. But what they mostly do they work with different automation tools or they even build automation themselves so they a lot knowing some scripting languages or programming languages would definitely be beneficial but also knowing cloud technologies is very important knowing how to work with them um, and even knowing different automation and configuration tools deployment tools so octopus deploy jenkins chef puppet there's just so many tools out there, new tools coming every day, and that's why demand is always growing. So demand for this one, I see it continuing to rise. This one is another one of those things that may not require a degree, but does require a lot of experience. Um, training could definitely get you up to speed, uh, but DevOps, number five. Lastly, I was surprised that I put this on the list, but it's just something that's been in my mind, a position that you know I kind of wouldn't mind moving into if I was to leave cybersecurity. And that is a technical sales engineer, technical sales representative, analyst, whatever you want to call them. Technical sales is just from what I've been able to see working with different vendors, it's a very fun position. It's always in demand because any organization needs sales reps. They need people who are gonna go out there to sell their products and they get to travel, they get to eat, they get to go out with clients. And <laughs> I mean, it just, depending on what you wanna do, uh, depending on how free you are, how free your lifestyle is, a technical sales rep position is amazing. It's, it's very fun and from again i haven't personally worked within it but from what i've seen working with different vendors it is a very exciting position to have and it is very rewarding based on the pay of course it depends on who you work for and how well you are performing and it may not specifically be technical um but 
from what again from the vendors i've worked with they do have a lot of technical knowledge uh, so it may require some experience but again training and being a good salesperson is going to be key within a position like that and just having that will having that being a very personable person um, outgoing person a person who loves to converse who loves to meet new people um, and just someone who can talk on things very well and with that you could hop into one of these tech sales positions and I feel like you'd be very happy and it's just one of the ones that I feel like is completely winning and actually I do have an honorable mention I want to include project product management uh, this is a position that I feel like has a lot of growth because as different um, organizations start sourcing their own software development, product development, they're going to need people to manage those projects, manage those products, and who best to manage it. With the growth of software engineering and software development, even machine learning, AI, I feel like there's going to be a lot of growth within project management and product management just within the IT realm. Training and experience is going to be good, but just also being a subject matter expert, knowing different technologies, that's going to benefit you when it comes to being a project product manager within IT. But that's all I have for you guys today. I really appreciate you watching. Make sure you guys like, subscribe, and comment below. If you have any questions, let us know. And see you guys on the next video. Thanks for watching Push the Pride.